Well, good Tuesday morning, dear saints. Great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Our psalm for this Tuesday after Pentecost is Psalm 94, and today we continue reading in the book of Numbers, chapters 22 from 21 on, in through 23, the third verse. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the word of the Lord this morning from the psalmist, Psalm 94. Understand, O dullest of the peoples, fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, does he not rebuke? He who teaches man knowledge, the Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are but a breath. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law, to give him rest for his days of trouble, until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not forsake his people, but he will not, and he will not abandon his heritage. Well, you can hear in there what's coming. You can hear in there that our Lord disciplines his people. You can hear how our Lord continues to want to draw them back to his truth, to live in his wisdom. These are words that will be for Balaam as he continues to try to play that middle ground, but God is going to send a very special messenger to stand in front of him and his donkey. Hear that from Numbers chapter 22. So Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. But God's anger was kindled against him because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as his adversary. Now he was riding on the donkey, and his two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the road and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn her into the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyard and the wall on the either side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, he pushed against the wall and pressed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck her again. And the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have made a fool of me. I wish I had a sword in my hand, for then I would kill you. And the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden all your life long to this day? It is, my, is it my habit to treat you in this way? And he said, No. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with a drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed down, and he fell on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to oppose you because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside before me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely just now I would have killed you and let her live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you stood in the road against me. Now therefore, if it is evil in your sight, I will turn back. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only the words that I tell you. So Balaam went on the way with the princes of Balak. 
When Balak heard that Balaam had come, he went out to meet him at the city of Moab on the border formed by the Arnon, at the extremity of the border. And Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send to you to call you? Why did you not come to me? Am I not able to honor you? Balaam said to Balak, Behold, I have come to you. Have I now any power of my own to speak anything? The word that God put in my mouth, that must I speak. Then Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kirath, Huzrath, and Balaam sacrificed oxen and sheep and sent for Balaam. And Balak sacrificed oxen and sheep and sent for Balaam and for the princes who were with him. And in the morning Balak took Balaam and brought him up to Bamoth Baal, and there he saw a fraction of the people. And Balaam said to Balak, Build for me here seven altars, and prepare for me seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did as Balaam had asked. And Balak and Balaam offered on each altar a bull and a ram. And Balaam said to Balak, Stand beside your burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me I will tell you. And he went to a bare height. This is the word of the Lord. Here we have Balaam continuing to try to play the middle ground, remember? He has a clear command from God to only speak what God says, and yet he's trying to find that way to keep Balak happy, to continue to do the things that he wants to do so that he can get paid. This isn't about being faithful. This is about being financial. He wants the money. God sends a messenger. God sends the angel of the Lord. And you hear that phrase a lot in the Old Testament. The angel of the Lord. Well, the angel of the Lord is not necessarily an angel as much as it is the Lord. This is Jesus. The angel of the Lord is the pre-incarnate Jesus coming in physical form into our world to do the work of his Father. It's almost the same in the New Testament. Except here we don't call him the angel of the Lord. In the New Testament we call him Jesus, Messiah, Savior, Prince of Peace, Mighty God and Everlasting Father. As we look at it here though, Jesus comes and he stands before the donkey and everyone seems to get it except Balaam. The donkey sees Jesus, the donkey turns and off road he goes out into the field. And what's Balaam's response? He beats the donkey. The second time the angel of the Lord appeared and the second time Balaam beat the donkey. The third time the angel sees, or excuse me, the donkey sees and sets down and Balaam beats the donkey again. And then an amazing thing happens. The ass makes an ass of the guy sitting on top of him. The donkey speaks. And he brings to mind all of these things of the past. Have I not treated you fairly? Have I not been your donkey? And the crazy thing is is that Balaam answers. And it doesn't seem to affect him. It doesn't seem to seem strange to him that he's talking to the animal and the animal is talking to him. It seems like there's something going on here. The angel is speaking, the donkey is speaking, and Balaam is not hearing. But as we go through the rest of the story, we see Balaam again trying to be faithful to the words that God spoke. The word that God has put in my mouth, that must I speak. And he begins now with his first oracle and we'll see Balaam do more of that tomorrow as we come back forward again. Trying to be faithful to God. Balaam utters a very profound statement. The words that God has put in my mouth, that must I speak. The world would call you and I to be a part of the world. To listen to the word of God and to keep it when it benefits you, but overall you want to do what you want to do. The world would shape us and form us into its own image. And what God has given to us is his word. The angel of the Lord. 
the word of the Lord. It's the same. It's Jesus. And Jesus' words have given to us. Jesus reminds us, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We cannot listen to the words of the world and still expect to receive the salvation that our Lord has given to us because the world and the word are completely opposite each other. The word of the Lord is what God has given to us and it is by that word that we live. Oh, we don't do it well, believe me. We fall into every trap. We fall into every sin. But in faith, we come before our Savior and we ask for forgiveness and he gives it to us because of the angel of the Lord, because of Jesus on the cross for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Faithful pastors hear these words that God speaks to Balaam and they obey them. The word that God puts in my mouth, that must I speak. The words that God gives to your pastor when he writes that sermon on Sunday or for Sunday are words for your ears. Hear them. The faithfulness of your pastor who speaks from God's word and calls out all of the things that the world says is okay, those are words for you. When the world permits all kinds of things that God's word says no to, we cannot agree with what the world says. Even though our emotions, even though the world around us, even though all of our friends might say, this is what we want you to do, in faithfulness, by the faith God has given to us, we hear his, we hear his word. His word calls us to be in worship. His word calls us to repent. His word calls us to his altar, where he gives us his very body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. His word calls us to trust in him. And he will continue to serve us and forgive us and one day bring us home to be with him. The world cannot make those promises. Now the world would have us compromise. The world would have us say, no, that's not what it means. You can do this and that also. And there again, dear saints, we can't listen to the world when it says God is wrong. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man and woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God's word is true, preached and proclaimed by faithful pastors for you, that you might live in his grace and his forgiveness and his righteousness all of your days. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our catechetical review for today, the third part of the Apostles' Creed, this part of sanctification, of living this holy life. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church he daily and richly forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day he will raise me and all the dead and will give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ, this is most certainly true. Amen. I love the way that Luther starts out the third article when he gives us what does this mean. He lays it out that there isn't anything we can do. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, called me by the death and resurrection of Jesus. We confess that Christian faith. I believe in God the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Good and gracious Father, we thank you again that your word has come to us. Your word of truth is preached to us. Uphold your church, dear Father, and bring faithfulness of proclamation to all of your pastors and teachers, to all parents, that they may continue to live and to preach and to teach your word in truth. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Thank you for giving us your truth. Hear us now as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me also this day from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, thanks for joining us today. Join us again tomorrow. We'll continue walking with Balaam as he tries to play the middle ground. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.